Welcome back to another episode of Jack Snacks. Today on the channel, we're going to snack on Queen Jane approximately. That's the Dylan classic, but the dead used to do it a lot, so I took it upon myself to, uh, you know, learn how to solo over it a little bit, and I'm thinking about maybe doing this tune with my band, so I thought maybe I'd share what I've come up with with you, and hopefully you'll emerge from this lesson with a few new licks and tricks and ideas about how to, how to play over this tune. Songs out of D major. <laughs> Good news is it's all strictly D major. So diatonic to our D major scale. So those are all the notes you really need to play over top of this entire thing. However, granted, you're gonna need to learn how to, you know, still bring out the chord tone. So if you don't know your modes, this is a great song to learn them for, basically. So over top of the F sharp minor chord and the E chord and the A7 chord that you're gonna encounter. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to be playing still the scale notes from D major, but you're gonna to wanna to lead off of the one, three, and five, or one in minor three and five, of each of those you know, chords. All right, if you don't understand what that's about, maybe this isn't the lesson for you, but you know, maybe you take some uh, lessons, either from me or another uh, instructor or something like that, and they get you squared away, all right? Um, in the meantime, let's talk about the chords, right? We're gonna start out playing like a D pedal. All right, and then the singer comes in over the G chord. And then F sharp minor, E minor, back to D. G, F sharp minor, E minor again to A7. Okay, we can suss it if we want. Back to D, and I like to do it here, and I'll show you why in a second. D, okay, so it's barring with the index finger like an A chord. And we're gonna throw a pinky up here and grab the root here and mute the, the A string here. Sus, but keep the D in the bass and that sounds really nice over that. So that's it's still a G chord, just has the five in the bass, okay? So. Comes down to our minor six chord, that's a B minor seven. D, but we're gonna put the A in the we're gonna put the A in the bass, and then we're gonna suss it and keep the A in the bass, and then back to D, and suss again. starts again. If you guys are nice, I'll, uh, I'll download a video uh, just that contains my backing track so you can solo along to it. And now that we've got uh, the chords out of the way, let's get into talking about some soloing strategies and stuff like that. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so chord tones, chord tones, chord tones. That's always the way this stuff works. Arpeggios and scales, they come in really handy. Um, so let's think about that when we're playing. I, I start out uh, coming up into a little G fragment. Okay, so I'm playing the five and the three of our, of our G chord. Into the five and the minor three of the F sharp minor. Into the five and the minor three of the E minor chord. And then uh, go like... 
to get back into the D chord, right? And a little lick, I think I did. Right, G again, okay? And then I do over top of the, the F sharp minor. So that's the five and the minor three of the, okay, so that's the same intervals, just in a different place. here putting the five in the bass and the third there so all in that was three. okay so now we're on that a7 chord so we're going to build up over some a7 scales or whatever a mixolydian That's going from. So, the cool thing about A mixolydian is that's D major. So, this whole song is D major. So, at the end, it starts out sounding like I'm playing. Sorry. <laughs> Sounds like I'm playing over top of that A7 chord, right? But halfway through the line, the tension releases into that D chord, and I come into. And it just happens naturally because that's just the power of modes, right? So. Okay, then a little melody. And that's over the D chord, right? And now we're gonna come up and grab that B minor. And then we hit the, the chorus. Won't you come and see me, Queen Jane? Okay, which is like a D chord with a sus, but the bass is playing this kind of gospel thing where they put the five, so you hear. gives you a lot of opportunities to play the four and the five chord over top of that turnaround. Okay. So once we come up there though, I tend to just play the melody. And you can intermingle the G, A, and B, all with varying effects and, uh, you know, degrees of, uh, I don't know, just, it delivers a different emotion when you hear, won't you come and see me? Or won't you come and see me? Or come and see me? All three of those options have a different, you know, impact on how it sounds. So, but that's what I do. So, uh, you know, I do. So on the second time through the progression, there's, I guess, some more fancy ideas, a little bit denser. Um, and I open up with this uh, idea of coming down the scale, okay, off of each chord's fifth. So this is the G, so the five of the G is five of the F sharp, the five of the E, and the five of the D, right? So that's my target note, okay? And I'm gonna get there by playing this D major scale. All right, so let's look at this idea. progression right so won't you come and see me queen jane two three four okay, so over that last bit of the d chord we do that that d major scale and let me break it down for you first things first learn your d major scale and uh, off of each finger okay index that 
so that we can take advantage. Each of those positions has advantages and disadvantages, okay? So the middle, middle finger lead, okay? So starting from our middle finger on the D, I do this. Down, up, down, up, pull off, rotate to the pinky at the 12th fret. Like that. That little idea is tagged on to the rest of this, which is just straight up the major scale. some economy picking down so there's a down down right f sharp back here okay so and then over the f sharp over the e So we've just done this trill idea. Right? That's from the D chord. Now to get back onto the G chord, I do this. Okay, now granted, I do this little arpeggio sweep still over the D chord, but it sounds nice because it shares so many common tones. Each of those notes is actually in the D major scale, but they're not really over the D major chord like this would be. This is a different effect. Okay, so I'm kind of presaging or indicating I'm going to be playing G major even before I'm doing it, but... Like that. I think I did a little one fret. Okay, I do a lot of these little one fret gliss. And then, then I still give each note its own articulation. Okay? And then we're looking at playing over top of the F sharp, E minor, and then A7. And while I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I think I did something like... swing country and western kind of traditional trope here it's like a cliche to get to an a7 sound but it has some nice color tones in it so a7 but we have the five here and the nine and we come there by way of this nice sixth voicing okay i play a lot of lap steel and uh that's that's the sound I'm com comfortable with. So um, if you don't like it, I, I guess there's other options for you. But that's it. Okay, and then into the D seven, the, that D uh, major chord. I did another sixth. kind of puts the cap on the that country and western well that that texas swing kind of vibe so if we do So the next line is the one where we're playing D to G, back to D, and down to the minor six chord, which is uh, this B minor seven. Okay, so I did, I believe that B note happened at the top of the, the downbeat 
<clears throat> on the G chord. G. Into the B, okay, of our B minor, right? Something like. Slid up, I think, from F into F sharp there. Can't remember everything I do. Okay. And then uh, we've got uh, back to tagging the chorus. The won't you come and see me, Queen J. Okay, so I think we would have gone... So it's that same G major arpeggio sweep there. And that's the downbeat on the third of the G chord. Okay, and this is all I'm thinking, how do I get to this B minor? shapes kind of understood. there was just just some riffing out over the chorus at the end so let's take it from the top <laughs> trying to be glib I'm, I'm just kind of falling back on some things that I've spent a lot of time woodshedding but you've probably got things like that in your in your grab bag of go-to licks all right so think about when you were over top of that D chord won't you come and see Queen Jane right and then you've got a little build right to that D for the won't you come and see me, Queen Jane. All right, so that pretty much wraps up, I don't know where I'm at with my Queen Jane approximately. I've got other ideas and things like that that I bust out all the time, but you know, nothing that uh, was in that, there was nothing else in the, the playing example I had at the front of my lesson. You guys, if you're, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please support the channel by subscribing. And if you want to get into taking private lessons, obviously you can reach out and contact me at Jack underscore Divine, spelled D-E-V-I-N-E at hotmail.com. And uh, once again, thank you very much for your viewership and for being hopefully a good and kind person to everybody you meet today. All right, so take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon on the next episode of Jack Snacks. Take care.